Mm. Mm. Yeah. So one image coming to me is something of the, 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 the evolution or progression of, uh, an always revitalizing art that inspires the continual transformation of this very question posed in different language as well. Yeah. And, and then, and, and that, and that's something that, that the, that the involved, that the involvement, the participation in the ultimately what looks to me like the collective creation of this art becomes then um, like a, like a, a really high and deep and broad drive and reason for being together. Um, and, but, but, but one that doesn't, um, d- uh, diminish or obliterate or, or like a kind of reduce away the, the tragic suffering involved in the pursuit of that art, <laughs> um, at all. Yep. Um, and that nevertheless inspires. So that's one image. That's one image. It's that's a beautiful to image. And that to me, that's a, that's the, we, my hope, when I say that I'm hopefully, you know, I'm also scared of shit, by the way. I'm looking, I, my, wherever I'm sitting, it's like, oh, over there's heaven and maybe there's real hope and over there's hell and there's real likelihood of that. So the horizon to me of our human situation um, feels there's a kairos of the moment to borrow John. You know, John's getting me up to speed on Greek. <laughs> yeah. Kairos of the <laughs> yeah. moment, you know, this is not the Kronos. Yeah. This is a major domain. Um, and the, what we do now has lots of variance outcome in relationship to the downstream consequences. Uh, and, you know, the, the outcomes right now are at a, one of these, you know, phase shift points where you can phase shift up and all of a sudden be like, oh, my God, this gets networked together. And there's a you know, potential consciousness that's awakening. And all of a sudden we awaken to our the good sides of our natures, realize that we're so much wealthier than we ever guessed. We can distribute that, create a safety net foster the kind of growth and connection with each other that then, you know, I'm never going to be utopic, but it's basically like, Hey, we can do a lot better than we're doing. Mm -hmm. And then there's the Mm -hmm. other part of me is like, Oh fuck, we're actually on Titanic. It's already too late. We're going to hit the guy. (laughs) And my kids are, whether they're going to be in a society that actually sustains them, even though they're high water, given all their privilege is, you know, maybe not. So that's where fundamentally my, my structure lands there. But my yeah. the how the analytic and humanistic hopeful side is actually, I believe that there's a collective intelligence that's emerging that has the potential to sync up and to achieve an upgrade in our fundamental insight. And if we do that, we can create a resonant understanding. And yep. I can even justify that, I can justify that completely scientifically <laughs> through like the tree of knowledge. I can also justify it spiritually with the empirical transformation. And I get an, I get a spiritual charge off of what's called the singularity. Okay. So um, there's a, I don't know if we talked about this at all. I mentioned in a number of different things. So the singularity, I'm sure you've heard, you know, there's the, uh, the idea of, there's a technical, sing- technological singularity. There's a social singularity. There's all this debate about what the hell singularity is, okay? Mm-hmm. There actually is a pretty simple formulation for what a singularity is. Mathematically, a singularity is just one over X as X goes to zero, okay? So at a basic, you can't divide something by zero, but as X gets smaller and smaller, one goes to basically infinity. That's kind of mm-hmm. what a mathematical singularity is, okay? So now in terms of evolution, a singularity, what, what they track the singularity is they basically did, what is the time it takes for the next big innovation? Okay, it's time between innovation, all right? So if it used to be billions of years and then it's millions of years and then it's thousands of years and then it's hundreds of years and then it gets smaller and smaller as that's, that's X. And then as X goes to zero, okay, you move toward a singularity, all right? So that's a simple mathematical thing. Now here's what's unbelievably miraculous as far as I'm concerned. And my analytical side to me looks at this as like, shit. (laughs) I don't know how to Mm -hmm. explain this. Maybe the spiritual guys win this one. (laughs) From an analytical point, I mean, this is it. So in 1997, right? In 1997, me, Mr. Little, you know, atheistic scientist draws out the tree of knowledge, all right? 
That's what happened to me. I drew the four cones. And then I was like, hey, you know, clearly each one of these cones after matter represents an information processing communication network. That's, that's what cells do. DNA does that. That's what animals do. That's what the nervous system does. And that's what language does for us as people. Okay. It's an information processing communication network. All right. So once you then see that, then it obviously follows, well, is there another one? All right. Well, then once you say, well, is there another information processing communication network that supersedes humans talking to each other? It was crystal clear that the 20th century was laid down the information technology of our technological developments of the internet, of computers and emerging interface, interfaces with that was crystal clear, right? Mm -hmm. So you're like, fuck. Oh. And I said, I was like, well, 21st century is gonna be a big goddamn deal, okay? And then I started to see that there's a fifth joint point that we were gonna, we were gonna transition through the culture person dimension into some digital virtual, all right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So then there's mm -hmm. that. And, but now, then, then I hear about the singularity. So Ray Kurzweil, you know, talks about the technological singularity, and then he interprets that as well. That's when AI and humans will be, I mean, AI will transform uh, and we'll have artificial intelligence that supersedes humans. Okay, that's one interpretation. This guy, Max Borders, has the social singularity, which somehow we will wake up to a global consciousness. All those are really mm -hmm. cool. But I mm -hmm. then found a Russian mathematician named Kor Korovev. I can't say his Russian name. So in uh, that, he was a big historian, okay? So mm -hmm. big history is this, which was developed independent of the tree of knowledge, which then says there are these eight thresholds across time and complexity. And then big historians got interested in the ninth threshold, what comes next? And they generally framed it as the technological and social singularity, okay? Mm -hmm. All right. So then this Russian guy hears about it and gets involved in big history. Everybody on the, on the, who's been looking at the time till big inventions was a Western scientist. So all of the big inventions were framed in the context of Western uh, history and invention and all of that. And not surprisingly, the Russian world has a totally different set of inventions and people different doing different things. Mm -hmm. So actually now there's another data set on big events and intervention that overlaps only very loosely with the Western data set on big inventions. And you can mm -hmm. apply the same measurement, which is basically the time to the next intervention. And if it's on a curvature of acceleration, the time to next invention will get smaller and smaller, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. So the Russian mathematician applies a super simple singularity curve to the Russian to the Eastern Western and the Western map, okay? And he argues that Kurzweil, I think very convincingly, he argues that Kurzweil underestimates, there's actually, it's a hyperbolic exponential rather than just an exponential. So he tweaks the rate of acceleration with a super simple addition to the formula. And what that means is it's happening faster and faster until you quote, go vertical. Okay, yep. and we can talk about yep. what that would be, but it's getting faster and faster. So then he looks and applies this super simple formula to the West and realizes that the thing goes vertical in 2029 with a correlation of like 0.994, which in social sciences, a, a regression line that correlates at 0.994, almost a 1.0 regression line. It's unheard of in social science. Okay, that's mm. that. Then you go to a separate data set and the Russian crosses at 2027, like at 0.996, okay? Totally different data set, super simple formulation regarding the evolution of complexity that hits a cultural singularity or, or transcends itself in a particular way sometime between 27, 2029 and 2027, okay? That to me is like, oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Like, you know, yeah, it's oh my God. Like, that's like, what the hell? What is happening that, that is driving a particular type of, you talk about will or guidance or some intuitive thing towards what's betterment. Some, you know, all of us yammering, justifying apes, talking to each other, building shit is coercing towards some sort of, you know, emergent, you know, phenomenon. And, and that, yep. you know, and, and you can bring science in that. You can say, ah, oh, well, nobody knows the singular. It's not like sky's going to turn purple and there's 6,000 things. And yes, those are all good rightful critical things but the spiritual side of me says jesus 
you know, especially yeah. knowing my own personal world in this, that I popped up on the screen, had some flash of insight when I'm stoned, was draw out a tree of knowledge and just then now been tracing this little baton of energy information into some insight that's now part of some collective thing that's been emerging over eons. I don't yeah. know how to explain that. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. <laughs> what a what an incredible what an incredible articulation that was. Oh, yeah, that's uh that's a lot to process. So, 